All right, so this little intro here for you guys is just to kind of explain what just happened. So um, we we were trying to do a remote episode with our boy, Jay Roddy. He's the shit. Go check him out. And it was delaying really bad. It, it really wasn't working out how we like to do it. it. It got too interviewee, if that's a word. So we cut it a little short. Um, this is going to be a bonus episode. I hope you guys like it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of On Tap. Today, we are joined by one of the most underrated artists that we've ever seen on TikTok, Jay Roddy. Thank you for coming on, man. How's it going? What's good, you guys? Um, I appreciate you having me on today. Yeah, dude. So we really wanted to get you on because we first saw you on one of our buddies, Travis from Dirty Prescott Kids, did a, a, a TikTok to one of your songs. And right away, we're like, oh, shit, this is a good song. Like, we've never heard of this guy. Click on your page. See, at the time, I think you only had like, uh, I don't even remember what it was, like a thousand followers. I was like, there's no way. No way. So we look you up on Spotify. We've been a fan ever since. I'm glad that we can finally get connected and have you on. Give us a little peek behind the curtain. What do you do uh, like your day to day? So I went to college for accounting, but it just really wasn't what I wanted to do with my life, <laughs> clearly. Um, and then I started working with my dad who does, uh, remodeling, like exterior remodeling, siding, windows, roofing, all that. So right now I'm just learning the trade on the side while I hopefully blow up within this next year. But dude, you're definitely poised for it. And I think it's actually kind of cool too, because I, one of the biggest reasons also why we wanted to have you on was that we do this segment called blue collar happy hour. So we actually bring on, you know, like some of our friends and some local like tradesmen around here that are just blue collar dudes. So Hell yeah. it's uh it's a good fit to have you on this thing. So now you didn't want to be an accountant. You're doing <laughs> blue collar work right now. Like what made you decide to want to pursue music? Um, I've honestly always been surrounded by music. My mom, listened to a wide range of music when I was growing up and eventually I started listening to rap but it's just something that I did to kind of express myself tell my story and it got to the point where people were resonating with it so I was like fuck it it's working yeah you posted a video of you rapping over the Bill Gates Lil Wayne beat from 2012 not that long ago did you start in 2012 or like when did you start like recording yourself making songs so it's probably like late 2011 uh, i don't know if you guys ever heard of the imt pain app it's uh basically an app that t pain made oh yeah it's like an yep. auto tune you basically just plug your headphones in pick a beat just run it there's no way to like cut the beat or mix it it's just one take if you fuck up, you got to restart. So me and my buddies were doing that a ton, and I kind of fell in love with it. Yeah, what up, Jay Roddy? I just want to say hi. I haven't, I haven't talked yet. In the first You're good, bro. Minutes. You're good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm <laughs> took an extremely large edible before this started, so bear with me, brother. <laughs> one, thing, one thing that I really noticed about your craft um, that I – that I just am a huge fan of that and that brought me to your content in general is just your video editing skills are amazing. Like, how did you even learn how to edit video? I appreciate it, bro. And uh, I know exactly how you're feeling after that edible, to be honest. <laughs> the video editing came after the beginning of TikTok. So I was kind of just using the in-app video editing and all that. But I noticed that my videos weren't taken off the way that I planned on. So I was trying to find out a way where I can kind of push my music, be more engaging. So I kind of had to up the quality of my edits, the production quality, and kind of just entertain people. Did you just teach yourself? Did you just fuck around with enough stuff that you things started to click and you, you made it happen? Or did you, did you take a class? Honestly, you just learned it from my YouTube tutorials and kind of just experimenting with Premiere Pro. Just trying to see what other artists are doing at the same time, but also putting my own little flip on it. Yeah, dude, I, 
I, I love it, bro. And I, I want to take this back. I kind of took us off track. I want to go back to your 2012 <laughs> video. You kind of, you made that Jack Harlow type of video, you know, where it goes yep. through his progression. And I, I love that shit. And, and like when, when you were, how, how old were you in 2012? I was a senior in high school. So probably around like 17, 18. So, so at that age, at that age, I feel like, you know, there was Mac Miller and there, there, Eminem was still pretty big at the time, but I feel like, you know, the white rapper, the white rapper had a little, they had more of a gateway at that point. Did you, did you get messed with in school or anything or did anyone talk shit about your videos or did you have support in the beginning? So that's a good question. Let me run you through a little scenario here, boys. You're finding yourself lean on energy drinks that have enough caffeine to make a normal guy not sleep for 48 hours. You're going through the nicotine just as fast as your hard-earned money can buy it just to stay focused. Let me tell you, that is not the answer. Let me introduce you to a little product that's going to help you with those estimates, lay that block, or wire up those electric panels a little bit more efficiently and with a clear head. I recently started using a little something called Magic Mind. And this is the world's first productivity drink in the form of a shot. Would you rather drink some weird chemicals that you've never heard of out of that energy drink that smells like the porta potty on the job site? Or would you rather drink something that has a little combination of matcha, honey, lion's mane mushroom, ashwagandha? And I know what you're thinking. No, ashwagandha is not something that the sleepy dude with the red eyes you used to work with smells like. This is an adaptogen that reduces stress and anxiety. The nootropics in this bad boy improves your attention span, your ability to learn new information, and best of all, your memory. And on top of all that, you'll save a little money by not buying those nasty energy drinks. Head on over to magicmind.com and get yourself one of the best tasting, longest lasting, real energy drinks that I've personally ever had. You can also use code ONTAP20 for 20% off a one-time purchase or 50% off a subscription. That's code ONTAP20. Two zero. I never really got like hatred for it, but people just kind of laughed. Just be like, "Oh, what is this little white boy doing?" Um, and I really didn't care because it was something that I really enjoyed doing, and it it felt right to me, and it was an escape from my daily anxiety or whatever you want to call it. But it. Definitely was a little gate kept at the time, but it obviously Mac Miller proved that anything can happen. Jack Harlow, but we're here, so I didn't quit. Yeah, that's great, dude. I mean, kudos to you because it's it takes a lot to be able to do it for that long with nothing or very little in return. Um, I mean, you have such high quality production, and the songs are great. So yeah. it, it's just wild to see that you don't have like a hundred K, 200 K, 300 K monthly listeners, because I feel like you're in that same category. I appreciate it. And going back to what you said, there was long periods of time where I was just putting out videos by myself, self edited back in like 2012 to maybe 2016, where I was getting no views, no comments, but I just love doing it. So it really didn't matter to me. Yeah. I mean, one of the biggest things that we noticed is that you're unbelievably good with dealing with like hate comments. Like you'll pin it to a <laughs> video of like uh, one of your songs and it just is playing or like people flaming you. You'll just post it right to the video. Like, how do you, how do you, what do you think makes it work so well? Like, as bad as it sounds, is I think people love controversy. So what I noticed is that people were engaging more to me responding to hate comments for some reason. But I'm a very positive person, so I like to take a negative and use it to my advantage. So that's why I would kind of throw it up there so that was the first thing people would see. Yeah, I mean, that is just a testament to really what you've done because... What do you what do you do? Like do you have like a whole content strategy? I noticed that you post just a shit ton. Is that like the way to get seen now as an artist in general? Or like what's the strategy behind marketing yourself? At first I was posting whatever I thought was the right way. So I'd look up whatever strategy other artists are using. And at the time it was posting like 
three videos a day, which I don't think was benefiting me because it was kind of just putting out low quality content. So right now I'm focused on really just putting out a quality video every one to two days. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. I mean, what we try to do is like at least one thing gets posted every mm-hmm. single day, Monday through Friday. Like that's what we try to stick to. But um, when when you come to like how you're making songs, do you ever like play it from the standpoint of I'm going to make these lines in the song to make this particular part of the song a clippable thing for TikTok? Um, not necessarily because I... I like to be genuine with my music. So whenever I record, it's pretty much freestyling. And whatever's on my mind is what pops out. And like going back to what we were saying with J. Cole and Lil Wayne, the way that they kind of punch in their bars, I just build a song based off my initial thoughts, which really have nothing to do with anyone else besides myself. So I just stick to me and what I'm going through. I feel like TikTok had to really be a game changer for you because I'm not going to lie, I, I stalked your gram and I don't know if you're a deleter or what, but it was it was pretty weak compared to the TikTok. I scrolled for probably two minutes before I hit like mm-hmm. October with the gram. I, I thought there was like 15 posts. So TikTok definitely was a game changer for me. It just opened my mind up to new opportunities and just kind of being comfortable with myself in front of a mic and a camera. But Instagram, I've been on there since 20, whenever that came out, maybe like 20, like 2009, 2010, around there. But I kind of just archived all my old photos and now I stick to just posting reels and keeping that aesthetic on my page. So that's why you can only see 15 or so videos because I try to keep that cool vibe going you know professional i guess you could say heard that because it's kind of like not only a portfolio but also kind of like exactly card, you know like you do other freelance work too i saw like uh, you do like album mm-hmm. artwork and video editing and, and filming and uh so it's almost like you said like sort of like a, your business card do you you obviously keep your personal and your business accounts separate but do you get more people hitting you up for your services like on your actual page or your business page? Probably my page because I usually leverage my page to promote my business page. And it's it's a lot of other artists that follow me or know me. So I kind of use that to my advantage. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Well, and you gotta. That, I mean, that's that's part of the marketing. You obviously... You got to be making money to pay for the music, and that's the way that you do it. So I, mean, I don't think that's bad at all. Well, that's one thing that it's really tough for us is we have to have full time jobs to make this even happen, and then to just not get paid for all the extra time going into it, but working forty hours plus a week with our job. And you know, now I'm I'm in for two years, and I came at the pot when the podcast was already well over a year old. Like it. It is a true grind. So when it finally works out, it's I, it's going to be the best feeling. 100%. In the- and I, I really think that's what separates the passionate from the people that are just doing it to get clout or make money. Because right now, we're both in the same shoes. I'm not making the money that I desire from music yet, but the passion will take us there. Are you making anything right now? Or like, Are you monetized on any social media? Yeah, I make money through streams and then all my royalties aside from like the mechanical royalties. Um, I do like feature charges, but other than that, not too much. It's not enough to live on. What was it like being an artist? I'm sure the first time someone hit you up for a feature... That had to feel that had to be something that felt special. Like, wow, this guy fucks with me enough to ask me to be on his song. Was that was that a pretty surreal moment? Hundred percent. Just getting acknowledged for something like that is cool as fuck. Even if it's not a big song or anything like that, it's not even about the money at that point. It's kind of just cool to see another artist respect me 
enough to ask for a feature. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, if you could um maybe drop a little inspiration bomb on us here. How do you how do you keep it pushing? Like what keeps like what keeps you motivated when you're going through times where you're not getting a lot of exposure, there's not a lot of views, there's not a lot of traction. Like what <laughs> what pushes you? Honestly, just thinking of never living a life that I have control over and knowing that I'm capable of making this happen and being the only one that can make it happen regardless of the numbers. And one thing that I've really focused on is the law of detachment, which in essence is basically remove all thoughts of the the end result and really focus on believing and trusting the process and knowing that amazing things can happen out of nowhere. So any video that you post is the seed that could be watered. Right. Right. I love that. Yeah. I mean, shit, I feel you brother because doing this for three years, like we only just recently really started seeing some real traction. I mean, it was, it's been a long road. No, you guys are killing it. I mean, the, what's crazy and what people might not understand from an outside perspective is going from 10,000 total followers to 150,000 total followers. The money difference is basically nothing. I mean, we, <laughs> that's something people would, they think, oh, you got 100,000 followers. Like, oh, you must be making real money. No, no, that's not the case at all. And that that's what's mm-hmm. tough about the grind. It's like, all right, at what point like you got to hit a million to make the money? <laughs> exactly. And then the number just keeps going up. The way that I look at it is that's just hard work right there. It was one video, two videos that popped off out of nowhere that put you there. Imagine if you didn't post those videos, you'd be you'd be at 100 bo- followers still. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've had some just we've had some ones where Cody is like, oh, this is going to be a stinker, but I'm going to post it anyways. We had one specifically, Frog Army. Shout out to Frog Army. It was good to us. That video got like 10 million plus on YouTube (laughs) Shorts. That was the first time we ever got traction on YouTube Shorts. That's crazy. It was nuts. I remember looking at my phone and getting notifications from YouTube. I'm like, we never get YouTube notifications. What the fuck? It's going up, going up, going up. 99 plus, 99 plus, 99 plus. And in 24 hours, it was at like 2 million. I was like, oh my God. It was great. It was a ride that I loved riding. <laughs> it's, it's a dangerous game. It's a slippery slope because like that instant gratification that you get from that, it's almost like a slot machine. It's like so addictive that you're like chasing that feeling over and over and over and over again. And that's, yeah. I mean, the benefit of posting on these other platforms too. Because you never know. One could be a dud on TikTok, but it could blow the fuck up on Facebook Reels. So you just never know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've had that happen dozens of times where, like, TikTok, we have, we've got 40,000 something followers. It's gotten like a thousand views on TikTok. And then you'll go to Facebook, it'll be at a couple hundred thousand. It's like, what is even the difference? Why is, why is this platform taking off? Right. It just, it's mind boggling. I try to post on every app alone, but I mean, doing it yourself can be hard just because it's a lot of planning and honestly remembering to post because most of the time I forget to post on Facebook Reels because it's not one of my biggest platforms. Yeah. How do you how do you determine like the ideas for some of the videos that you do? I see you do a lot of like almost like green screen work where it's like you have a green screen mask on mm-hmm. or like hold your phone that has your face in front of the screen and some really creative ideas. How did you like initially start getting into that? So when I want inspiration for something, I don't know if anyone knows this cheat code, but Pinterest is honestly helpful as fuck for me. Even with graphic design, like I'll have an idea in mind, but I'm not sure what I want to make. And then I'll just put in like a keyword and something will pop up. Not necessarily something that gives me the full idea, but gives me a concept, I guess. So I just kind of compiled a bunch of like pictures of ideas and then I just brought them to life with with video. Dude, that's badass. Well, like I said, we wanted to bring you on here and really just give you your flowers because you're killing it. We'd love to see it. And we really want to thank you for coming on, man. Where can everyone find you on all your socials? 
I appreciate you guys having me. It's been a it's been a blast getting to know you guys. I've I've peeped your your videos all the time, so it's cool to like put a personality to your faces and stuff. But you guys can find me on J Roddy Music on all platforms. So make it easy for you guys. Come being a huge fan, just like Cody said. This this is more to celebrate you. We're just happy to meet you. Thank you again, guys.